Good evening, everyone. I'm Jeff Simon from Social Flight, and I'm here to host this really interesting uh, webinar that we have this evening. I'm joined by Raul Canales and Peter Elliott from Bendix King. We've got a great presentation tonight on using ForeFlight and also the other uh, navigators so that you've got the other EFBs with the AeroNav and Avidyne GPS navigators. Now, I'm a huge fan of this product. I've got it in my A36 Bonanza that we use here at Social Flight, and uh, I also am using it in uh, what you can see behind me. I'll lean the other way. Our T51 Mustang that we're building here. And uh, so, huge fan of these products. And we'll talk as we go through the presentation about why uh, they are such a good fit for so many cockpits and also the flexibility that they give you by being able to integrate with an iPad. And uh, again, we're, uh, we're going to use that. We'll talk about how we're going to use that in our Mustang as well. And so, um, again, I'd like to bring everyone on the line uh, now. We've got uh, Raul and Tom and Peter uh, all coming on. Let's uh, bring them in. We're also going to be joined this evening by Tom Harper from Avidyne, who will be with us, especially towards the end of the presentation, where uh, they can help uh, field some questions if you happen to have specific questions about uh, looking at it for your uh, aircraft or anything else like that. And uh, we'll uh, use all the experts at our uh, disposal here. Welcome, guys. How are you doing? Oh, looks like uh, Mike's not on. Let's uh, try that again. There we go. Hi, how are you doing, guys? Technical difficulties. <laughs> no problem. Well, very well. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. Okay, I will turn it over to both of you. I'm going to uh, shut off my webcam. We'll go through that demo, and again, we'll bring everybody on for questions towards the end. Okay, so I'll take it over from here, and um, I want to let you guys know that this is very, very brief. Um, Basically, what our intent is to give you an idea of the partnership that we have entered in with Avidyne, whereby we are selling their product branded as an AeroNav. Um, you can see on your screen there the, diff the, uh, the brand for uh, Bendix King versus Avidyne. What this does is it allows us to, it allows you to be able to buy either from an Avidyne or Bendix King dealer. Same, same uh, model or same uh, same product, you can just get it from a different network if you want to do that. So um, we are today going to be using the AeroNav 800, which is the IFD 440. And, and the idea here is you can buy small glass, you can buy this 2.66 inch um, navigator and actually get big glass out of it. In fact, uh, this product allows you to uh, use the IFD 100 app to sync up to up to two iPads. Now we're not going to be using two iPads in this uh, in this demo. We're going to be using one, but um, this is the the model we're going to be using here, the smaller one. And so you'll be able to see how we can interface or inter interact between, in this case, um, the uh, EFBs and and the uh, the actual product, and be able to make some changes. So fairly uh, simple. Uh, demonstration, but I'm going to also show you through Tom that there is a vast array of uh, information out there for you to be able to look up and to get lots of information. There's lots of training videos and um, resources for you should you decide to go with this for your airplane. So with that, let me go ahead and get going here. You should be able to see an AeroNav 800 IFD uh, 440 here on the right hand side and on the left hand side you should be able to see an iPad so I'm sharing my screen right now and uh, I have a very simple flight plan from uh, Goodyear going to Las Vegas through two points and we're basically going to send this to we're going to send this to the uh, to the product by pressing on the little airplane I don't know if you can see this uh, right in the middle I'm going to press on it uh, let me use my my mouse here. I'm gonna press on this little airplane here to to be able to send this on to Let's go the, to the uh, store and root page. Go to the store yeah. root page so you can see it come in. Yep, right here it is. There we go. And you'll see it pop in. And we're gonna send it to the panel. And there it is. K A G Y R to L A S. We're going to take that in. 
We're going to activate it and then activate the flight plan to get going. And then when we do that, you're going to see that in the iPad that has four flight, you see this turn into a little airplane, which basically means that um, they're synced. So at this point in time, this uh, the I, this is a simulator on the right-hand side that you're looking at. So it is pretending at this point that it's actually flying the route. So you can see the airplane moving. It's going to take off soon, and it's going to be on its way. So I'm actually going to accelerate that. I'm going to do two, two X, not too terribly fast, but we're going to go faster. In the meantime, I'm going to switch over on the um, iPad over to the IFD 100 app. And so here you can start to see now where you have one, one product, which is the IFD 800. And the iPad actually allows you to be able to use multiple screens and see what you otherwise wouldn't. So a 2.6 inch screen isn't going to give you the visibility save that you would out of an iPad. But the iPad doesn't know any better. It thinks it's an IFD. So it's going to act as one. And you can, uh, there's literally nothing really you can't do on the iPad with some few limitations that you couldn't do on the IFD or Aeronav. Back to four flight. You can see now that we're moving, we're flying to our first waypoint. I'm actually going to change this. We're going to do the rubber band thing here and uh, switch it to a different spot. And then we're going to update the IFD from ForeFlight by sending that to the panel. And I'm going to go back to root so you can see it come in and sending that to the panel. And there it is. It popped in. We're going to act here. Now, here's a, a word of caution. Because this is a trainer, we are going to go back to the beginning. <laughs> and so you will see the airplane come back to, to Goodyear in this case. But if we, if we were actually flying, it would actually make the changes in flight. Oh, got to give it an altitude. Okay, so you can see on the left-hand side, or rather the right-hand well, here, I'll show you. You can see the two different maps moving, one in the, IF, in the IFD slash aeronav, and the other one in four flight as the airplane does its uh, takeoff. And now you can see on, on both products how you, have, how you can uh, have a coordinated view. Tom, any other screens that you think would be useful for folks to see? What are more popular ones? You got the uh, SDS tab there that shows the uh, kind of the 3D in uh, exocentric synthetic vision. On you show it on the iPad there, nice and big screen. You can pen zoom that for range. If you hit the frequency button on the iPad over in the lower left, it'll nominate frequencies so you can highlight a frequency, just reach up and touch it and it'll move it into the standby and it'll immediately share my cam so I can talk and say, here we go. I'll be happy yeah, I'm going to bring that. everybody on now so we can, uh, and, and for those people in the, uh, in the audience, feel free to post some questions and we'll use that because this is meant to be an open discussion and also to talk to you about how these products uh, work. So, so go ahead, Tom, and then I'll share some of my experiences as well with these units. Absolutely. 
So just, you know, if you, notice when you entered the frequency in the standby, it immediately updated into the standby on the panel unit. And then you'd reach over on the panel unit and hit the flip-flop and act, put it into the active. Yeah. So anyway, you can clear out that screen, but that's just one of the things you can do is frequency nomination. You can load the approach from the iPad. You can go direct to from the iPad. Uh, and you can edit so, the flight plan on the iPad and send it back to ForeFlight if you want. Let's 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 talk about this. Why don't we back up a little bit? Because I mean, you know, one of the things uh, uh, that is so uh, you know interesting is we're really talking about two different ways that the iPad integrates with the AeroNav and Avidine uh, navigators. Um, one of them has to do with all of your pre-flight planning, and the other one has to do with how you actually fly with it when you're airborne. So if we could step back for a moment, um, having to do with the, the flight planning itself. I mean, we were talking about this just before we even came online. There's, you know, obviously four flight, biggest one that's out there as far as EFBs. Um, uh, but there's a, a wide variety of other products out there as well. Um, uh, I happen to, to use FlyQ quite a bit, and that's that's what myself and, and both my boys that uh, are also uh, uh, studying for, to be pilots use. And same integration, you know, the ability that you, for you to do your flight planning and to figure out what makes sense and then import it and do the same thing when you have to have changes as well uh, en route. Um, right. Tom, can you talk a little bit about like how, you know, exactly how that process works from those flight planners? Sure. And we, uh, we work with third party apps like uh, the IFD 100, I should say, works with third party apps like ForeFlight, Seattle FlyQ, Flight Plan Go, App Plan, and then uh, planning tools like uh, Cloud Ahoy. But typically, if you're a ForeFlight or a FlyQ user, you sit at home, you're working out your flight plan for either the flight later in the day or in the next morning or whatever, you could get a approved clearance. You take that iPad out to your airplane. When you fire up the avionics master, everything starts up. And now as, as Raul demonstrated at the beginning, we can push that send to panel button and squirt that flight plan right into your panel mounted box. You don't have to interface with it and load an entire flight plan that you've already spent all this time on your iPad maybe uh, building. It goes right into the box and then you're off and running, and then it all of a sudden starts sending position back to the fore flight to let you know that it's getting position updates as you cruise along. So it's super easy to use. The automation is amazing these days. So, we, you know, there's, there's, I've had some questions come in that, that have some, uh, you know, confusion about how the different, the two apps versus the, the panel mount unit itself. So could you explain, is it the actual, uh, uh, is it the third-party flight planners that, that send straight into the units in the panel, or does it go through essentially the IFD 100 app, which is basically a complete reproduction of uh, those uh, uh, panel mount navigators uh, within right. iPad? No, the four flight works independent of the other iPad apps, the okay. IFD 100 in this case. Four flight communicates directly on the Wi-Fi channel to the panel mounted AeroNav in this case. And then if you want to launch the IFD 100, it'll set up a communication link and, and operate uh, independently of ForeFlight. So uh, if right, you have so dual iPads. Communicating with the panel itself, you don't have to go right. through the IFD 100. Because when I, I know when I fly with it, I think of um, you know the flight planning and the IFD being a little bit, a little bit uh, uh, separate there, because obviously there's just, you know, so much you can do on some of the, whatever anyone's favorite iPad uh, uh, EFB app is, to do all your flight planning, either airborne or uh, or uh, before you fly, and that can just get shot right into your, right into your avionics. Right. And yeah, it's pretty kind of expand upon Roll's earlier comment about the partnership with Bendix King and Avidine is that our, our systems have open architecture that interface directly with the Avidine system. So when you do your pre-flight planning, come and download your flight plan to your Aerodyne system or your AeroNav system. That in turn, if you have an AeroView Touch system, which is our, our primary flight display, multi-function display, those all work together. In other words, the AeroNav downloads that flight plan or your, your, your flight planning to your AeroView Touch system. So right. that's another key uh, thing I think we need to emphasize. I don't want to have too much confusion, but um, that I think it's a very nice marriage between uh, Benix King and Aerodyne. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so I also wanted to share a couple stories of, of kind of how we've used these. I mean, um, you know, it's it's so sad, of course, that there isn't a, an, an air venture happening this year. But last year, for anyone that did make it out there, knows that weather was a huge factor. In fact, the airport got shut down uh, on uh, for on Saturday due to a thunderstorm. Sunday it was had it was really tough getting in there. And um, uh, when we were flying in in the Bonanza with all this equipment going. We had some real challenges in getting around that weather, and we had to figure out a reroute en route. And you know that it the, there's one it's one thing to actually know exactly where you want to go and how to get there. And these navigators in the panel are are very very easy to use in order to do that. It's another thing altogether to try to determine where you want to go, especially when you need to reroute. In our case, we had determined airborne. I, IMC getting knocked around, we needed to come up with where do we actually want to go that's going to be away from all this weather and spend the night. That means, you know, knowing about ground services, knowing about fuel prices, knowing about all the different things that go into that. And what we actually were able to do is uh, actually Jake and I in the front seat uh, were really working at just keeping the plane under control as we were getting the, some pretty serious turbulence. Ben in the back was able to sit there on the EFB and actually uh, he was using FlyQ, figure out all of the uh, you know options, talk it over, make a plan, and actually send that whole plan through directly into the navigators after we explained what we wanted to do to air traffic control. Boom, all that got done. So it's it's pretty impressive that you can do that and hand off whatever uh, amount of control of the uh, navigator as well you want to with the other app, which is the IFD 100, which again gives you that ability to have whatever size display that you want. And on that particular topic, uh, then it's interesting because we've got, so we've got um, in the Bonanza, we've got a dual setup where we've got uh, a, you know, a lot of screen real estate already there because we have the large uh, um, navigator uh, with the smaller navigator below it. And that, that you know, makes it easy to use those in tandem. Um, and it's less important for us to have the IFD 100 in that situation. However, in the situation behind me with the Mustang that we're building, that you're gonna have two pilots that um, can both use the front navigator by using the iPad and the IFD 100. And that's a pretty important part of our design because even though this is kind of a, a yank and bank show plane to get out there and, and um, have a lot of fun with the Mustang, we're going to need to travel with shows to this. And it's a fully IFR capable aircraft. And that means that the rear seat passenger, which is a pilot in our case, um, can actually control the navigator right there. And that's part of our whole design to how to do it. And so key part of our decision making in, is the ability to have all of that work and use the IFD 100 to completely control everything about the navigator up front. I just wanted to get that out there because it's a couple good examples of how that actually works. So um, any other, any things that you guys can add to that? And I'll start looking for questions coming in. That's good. I wanted to uh, just point out the vast amount of resources that um, Everdyne has on this product. I know that um, Tom holds a, regularly scheduled webinars um, and so I, I just want to put a plug in for that and show you guys uh, some of the resources so this is so this is this is yours Tom so feel free to talk to it I'll just just tell me next slide but sure go ahead and tell them about um, all the different resources that they have to be able to learn about how to use the navigators yeah sure uh, on on our uh, Avidine training page we have videos, webinars on demand, the training videos, uh, and the links to all the training partners we have uh, are available on the website. So if, uh, in fact, if you scroll to the next screen, maybe, here's our webinars on demand, ones we've recorded. And while this has the, this is the Avidine branded version, it's the exact same product uh, with the Bendix King brand. So you're gonna get all the same valuable training, uh, whether it's the basic stuff like we covered earlier today, uh, the advanced operation uh, using the iPad in the lower left corner here you see it uh, IFD 100 uh, learning the trainer learning the IFD 100 uh, the cell the setup pages so a lot of a lot of uh, uh, good resources there Let's scroll to the next one uh, we have a YouTube channel with 
videos with all the different lessons for you know how to go direct, how to enter a flight plan, how to edit a flight plan, how to load an approach, how to do the mist, uh, et cetera. And that all that includes the IFD 100 connection uh, in that instruction as well, right, Tom? Correct. There is a, an IFD 100 video specifically, and there's another a video on how to use the trainer. So if you're thinking about uh, the system, you can download the that trainer that Raul was demonstrating there and and actually play around with it at home. If you have two iPads, you can do exactly like he's done here and have the IFD trainer or the AeroNav trainer on one iPad and uh, have the IFD 100 on the other and see how it would work in the cockpit. So let's take some of the questions that are coming in on this. And, and you mentioned uh, right there as far as having multiple devices. Um, are you able to uh, ha uh, mix, like have a, a phone and an iPad connect, especially if uh, the EFB software supports both? Uh, yes, if, for the EFB, yes, the, the four flight, you can have it on a phone. Uh, the IFD 100 only runs on iPad. Got it. But uh, okay. you can definitely do that. Have the phone on the four flight and have your IFD 100 on your iPad. It's great. Right. Great point. And I'll address another question that came in that had to do with integration with the AeroCruise 100. And so when we're talking about integration with an autopilot, we have to think about how the system actually is architected. So your certified system, your every all your avionics in your panel, that's what's talking directly to your autopilot. And right. so it's actually kind of indirectly that you you do integrate directly with not just the AeroCruise 100, but any autopilot, because if you can actually control that flight plan uh, that's going into your AeroNav unit, then you that is automatically uh, controlling however you have it currently set up, uh, uh, configured in your aircraft, that's doing whatever it needs to to send that tracking command for your course over to your autopilot. And so the answer is, is yes, but indirectly, can your uh, uh, can your iPad integrate directly with your autopilot? Um, another question that came in, that uh, Tom, this is a good one for you, or Rel, whichever of you, um, that has to do with subscriptions. Can you explain how your data subscriptions work, um, not just with the main unit, but actually when it comes to the IFD 100? Yes. Uh, if you'd like me to handle that one, Rel, I'll sure, jump go ahead. in. Um, we partnered with Jeppesen, so we've got... Uh, subscriptions for the nav data, which you want to keep updated if you're flying IFR every 28 days. They've also baked in the obstacle database with that. There's a uh, charts database. If you've got the larger screen version, you can get approach charts and airport diagrams. That's not available on the smaller screen version, but you can set up a subscription through JET that even though you, this configuration you're seeing here, you're not going to show the charts on the small box in the panel, but you can still have the charts on the IFD 100 on your iPad, which is great. Now you've got a big screen MFD with uh, your airport diagram. Maybe you're in an unfamiliar airport, so they say taxiway alpha to alpha, uh, taxiway kilo. You know exactly where you're at. It's geo-referenced. That's all on there. So all the data has come through Jet. Or if you have an AeroView touch system. You're going to have the same approach plates and charts that's displayed on a multifunction display. So you're going to have redundancy between the IFD, and then you also have a panel mounted device with those charts as well. Right. Got it. Thanks, Peter. Um, so another question is, you know, one of the things that I really love about these navigators is the uh, the very powerful vertical navigation capabilities and how easy it is to just just touch on the screen and tell it, hey, you know, five miles before I get to the airport, I want to be at this altitude, or for this route segment, I want to be at this altitude. There's a lot of, of vertical navigation of altitude control that are built into the navigators. And one of the questions that's come in uh, has to do with, um, can that transfer uh, from your uh, EFB, from ForeFlight or from any of the others? <coughs> And, and come into your flight plan? And uh, hoping the answer is yes, but if the answer is no, is that something on your list? Uh, it's a good question. Um, I tried that just the other day with four flight and I couldn't get it to do it, but I'm not a four flight expert. I don't know if you used it with FlyQ, are you seeing that? I can't get a board to give you an answer. I haven't, I was hoping that, uh, I was hoping I was missing something, so perhaps it doesn't do it yet, but um, maybe we can put a vote in right now to, uh, to, to have that come in and go into your route segments 
uh, so that that vertical navigation is planned for in advance. Yes. Uh, so you can assign altitude constraints to any waypoint in the flight plan. Uh, the VNAV won't fly coupled to the autopilot until you're in approach mode, but it gives you the, the uh, top of descent bug and a chime if you're, it's time to descend to meet, to meet your altitude constraint that you've entered. And it'll also give you the Boeing banana, which is uh, uh, your arc, right? The, yep. Your altitude arc. So uh, when, when you're going to your target altitude, uh, which is really nice, that's computed in real time based on your current vertical speed. So, so that's the, of, that, uh, nice so what tool. Tom's talking about there, we, we also answered one of those, is you've got a green arc that's ahead of your path. Uh, you may be able to, to put this on the demo if you put it in a different altitude right now and then put it into 2D mode. Um, and that is showing you where you're going to be when you get to that altitude. Is that, is that correct? That's right. Ex excellent. Yeah, because I know I use that uh, all the time. And so true, it won't actually go if you're putting like a, an altitude select into your autopilot, but it's really helpful for knowing what's, what your altitude you want to be at. It's, it's giving you that, that uh, planning, that reminder. And it's also helpful because a lot of navigators, I know again FlyQ does it, can, uh, can calculate on the fly what the most efficient altitude for you to be at is going to be based on prevailing winds and things like that and your, your time to climb. And so if you can recalculate that and then send it into your navigator, it's it's there to also remind you, you know, what altitude you want to be at at what segment. And it just kind of gives you those clues. I, you mentioned approaches. And certainly, even, even when an, a, uh, an autopilot won't couple yet, which is usually during the final approach segment, I, I love having the altitudes for each segment of an IFR approach uh, be noted as part right. of your flight plan on your navigator because that sure beats looking at a chart uh, constantly to, to remind yourself or your notes to remind yourself where you're supposed to be at that point in time. So all you need to do is tap actually on uh, where the uh, uh, you can tap on either the distance or you can tap on the actual um, uh, altitude there in one of the uh, blocks that you have there, either the magenta or the uh, uh, blue, do you, you call it teal, <laughs> Tom? Um, and that'll allow you to put in an altitude. Now, Tom, another question that came in, is there any integration coming? Uh, I know that you can control your radios directly from the IFD 100. Is there any any uh, anything that might be coming from the EFB side? I, um, but uh, obviously, I, you know, we didn't talk much about that. And radio, controlling your radio frequencies from the iPad is super easy. Well, uh, uh, you can again, as use the frequency nomination on the IFD 100, we can we can enter for transfer frequencies across. But I don't know if any integration with the uh, EFBs to do right. that. And one of the things point. I want to point out about that is, um, you know, one of the uh, one of the things I like is having multiple fields up. You have the ability to configure all of these fields that are on your actual Aeronav and Avidine navigators. And so you can have two standbys and one active so that you can manage right. multiple frequencies. But when you do that, especially if you're using one of the smaller navigators, you are eating up a lot of real estate space to have that feature. If What's interesting is with using the IFD 100 on your iPad, you can then increase the number of standby frequencies and manage them all there and then nominate right. them and send your frequency directly through to the navigator. And that's a feature I absolutely love because I, yeah. if it were up to me, I'd have like all the frequencies I need for my flight and just, just pick it and send it in. And one of the yeah. reasons that's so helpful is that uh, if you look closely at the frequency, it tells you next to it what it is. So you don't have to remember what the frequency is. You could have a list there that actually says, great, I know I'm going to have this center and then they're going to hand me off, or at least in my area, I know I'm going to have Boston on this frequency and then I'm going to have Cape Approach on, on 118.2. And then I know after that, they're going to probably hand me off to talk to, let's say if I'm going to the vineyard, vineyard and if I'm going to a, a local uh, airport, Katama there, I'm going to have to make rapid changes to get through. And having all of that there and just tapping and swapping it in and being able to see what the frequencies are is incredibly helpful. And again, your iPad can become that scratch pad in order to actually do that. 
So that, uh, hopefully that answers uh, one of the questions out there. Great point. And uh, the only other thing we have left here, since I know we're out of time, is uh, just another vote coming in from another one of our viewers uh, to you, Tom, saying, hey, transferring altitudes, he's going to be uh, using this in the smaller form factor and putting it into his uh, RV-10, beautiful aircraft. Um, yes, and, nice. And uh, he, he wants the same thing I do. Let's be able to put our altitudes through. So I think you got to you know, send that through to the developers, I'm sure. Yep. I will. Uh, I just attempted to do it here on four flight, and I don't know if I did it right, but uh, I will get an answer certainly on it, and uh, we'll send that back out as soon as we figure it out. As soon as I Excellent. figure it out. So with that, I'd like to thank everyone for taking their time this evening. Um, hopefully, you got a little bit of information. Um, there's, you know, whether you start from the top down with uh, going to something like the Aeronav 910 and uh, 900 units uh, for an aircraft, or whether you start at the bottom up and look at what's the least expensive you can get a, a navigator into your cockpit, um, then uh, you, you know, you've really got quite a few options here. And even in the smallest form factor, one of the things that is so great is that you've got, uh, that still have the same kind of combination of touch screen and hard button controls. And speaking as someone who has been bouncing around a lot in IMC, that makes a big, big difference. And when you move to the smaller unit, uh, the only thing that I'm aware of that you lose, in, even in, in buttons on that, I believe you lose like v, your vertical navigation control or maybe it's the nearest button direct, but all the features are still there directly through the rocker buttons at the bottom. So a lot of features, a lot of real estate opens up. I know we've just scratched the surface, but feel free to send more questions through. And uh, with that, uh, Raul, uh, do you have anything that you'd like to add or Peter? I'd like to encourage people to download the, uh, the trainer and the, um, and the IFD 100 app and play around with it and see if you yeah, like it's it. It's all free, right? No charge. Hey, contact your closest Venex King dealer. Some of them are very well versed in a lot of these features. So they sell the Avidine as well as uh, our other product line. So ask them the questions too. A lot of those dealers are very knowledgeable. Excellent. And hopefully when the world opens up a little bit, we'll see you at one of the shows and, uh, uh, and, and uh, we'll see you. You'll be able to come over to uh, the Bendix King booth, go to the Abidine booth at, uh, at the next time that we're able to be at one of those. And uh, certainly if I see you uh, walking around there, I'd love to show it to you in, uh, in uh, whether it's the Bonanza or whether we're able to get there in the Mustang as well. With that, thank you so much uh, to uh, Bendix King, to Raul and Peter. Tom, thanks for joining us. Tom Harper from Avidine. And good night, everybody. It's a lot. Thanks a lot.